Hey, good morning. If you're like me, you actually enjoy making loads for flat cars. And I really do. Every time I see something on a, that can go on a flat car, I put it, put it on, or I make it. Or if I see a picture, I will actually do it. Here's a, uh, an engine that I took apart in ON30. And <laughs> um, yeah, it wasn't worth putting back together. There were too many things wrong with it. So I just uh, butchered it and uh, put it on these flat cars and just made a load out of them. Quite a lot of fun. Put some uh, come-alongs and some chains, rusted it all up. It was a, quite, quite a blast. And then here I actually have a World War I ambulance that was made by Ford and I think used by the French. And again, this is this one is a, a flat car from Bachmann. The previous ones are the ones that I made myself. Here is another picture I saw of uh, a Civil War cannon that, or uh, mortar that was called the Dictator. And I really liked it and couldn't find 48 scale, so I made it. But then I put it on a flat car. And this is a Bachmann 18 foot uh, flat car. So I enjoy doing a lot of that kind of stuff. Here's another part of my layout and where uh, here I'm gonna repaint <laughs> and put some uh, waterfalls up here. And we're gonna get to a point where <clears throat> we get to the 155 some flat cars that I've made over the years. And the excuse that I use to make these is they were found in a barn. <laughs> And uh, then I put them on a flat car as if they're being transported to a museum or someplace else. Um, here is, this is this three ser uh, ser series. Here's the swordfish. It's the biplane that disabled the Bismarck in World War II. Quite a lot of fun to make. I kept the bombs on it. <laughs> Never gonna be transported that way. The problem is, um, and you can see in the back here, is that eventually you run out of flat cars. <laughs> and that whole back row used to be full of flat cars. Unfortunately, Bachmann is no longer making uh, those uh, their flat cars, so I had to learn how to figure out how to make uh, flat cars from other places. And that's what this video is gonna be about, is uh, how did I make my own flat cars and you can see here, this one is a load of gilsonite, uh, which used to be transported in, uh, by the Unitas um, Railroad Company. Here's a World War I uh, set of uh, bombs <laughs> that are just sitting precariously. And you can see you know, um, many of these flat cars are my own making. Um, and they're actually made out of um, S-gauge flat cars that are heavily modified. Those are the Bachmann ones uh, back there when I still had, uh, was able to still buy them. All right, let's get started on converting this S-gauge injected molded uh, flat car into an ON30 flat car. The first thing before I get going that I'm gonna need to do is get rid of this little nib Right here and I used an exacto knife and just cut it off. Um, the reason I cut this off is because I need a flat surface to work on. So I just find these on eBay. Somebody uh, does them uh, sometimes as cheap as three dollars, um, sometimes a little, little more. And uh, of course the first thing I'm going to have to do is get rid of these little steps and uh, I'll show you how to okay. do that. First All step right is I have to remove these little steps that um, are part of this, of uh, the, the mold, because I'd rather put the uh, nice steps from Twi uh, Titchy uh, on, on this place. And I'm gonna have to also mill this circular thing down so that the car can sit lower. Now, I don't have a mill um, and it's very expensive. So I'm going to try to do this with my drill press. The fastest speed it can go is 3100 RPM. It's a little slow for milling, especially milling plastics because they uh, they can melt at a lower speed. This is a four flute uh, bit to quarter 
inch and it doesn't go well. <laughs> I've already experimented with this, but it goes well enough. So I'm going to show you how I do each, uh, all four of these. I just, and I set the depth gauge so that it can't go below a certain depth. This is all locked into place. And here we go. <clears throat> As you can see, that really produced a very nice, smooth uh, surface. It really removed the steps. And when I age this, you won't be able to see this sort of a scratched look. It's done on all four. I've got another 10 of these to go, and uh, I'll take care of that. And then we'll come back and we'll do that center part. Well, I'm grumpy. <laughs> I deleted a video I needed. So um, I had taped myself doing the milling uh, of, of bringing this round thingy that comes into from the flyer flat cars. The reason I had to uh, mill it down is because you see this is going to sit here on top of that. It's going to, and you, we'll, sh we'll show you how to do that. But the upshot is that that sits too high. And so I have to put multiple blocks here before I can put the coupler so that it reaches way down. And so it looks makes the car look right really high. So I needed to mill this surface down. Not too complicated, exactly the same as I did the, the steps. I used four fluted mill bit, <clears throat> went back and forth <clears throat> all over it. The unfortunate part, of course, is that you want to <clears throat> you're trying to hold on to it, move for, uh, forward and backwards. And <clears throat> the, the drill table is not the right tool to do that. It would grab the plastic and bring my hand into the bit. And I ended up uh, cutting my fingers, <clears throat> fortunately, not too badly. So I really don't recommend doing it, but it actually, it worked. And I did all of them with, uh, with uh, in that way. All right, well, it would have been a cooler video seeing it all, but this is the best I got. Continuing on turning this S-Gage flat car into an ON30 flat car, I'm going to put on the edges these titchy uh, stirrups. And they look like this. They come in pairs of four. I, I, I buy a huge bundle. The really nice thing is <clears throat> that if you look on the side, they come with these little protrusions. And I think this is just when they're trying to make uh, to make these things, uh, it, they, they just have the extra sprue that's on them. Well, I'm gonna, instead of clipping those off, I'm gonna use them because trying to clip these things off really just breaks the, the whole thing. And I'm going to use them by taking the edge of this black car, and this is gonna be hard to see, and you can see here, there's a little shape that comes into this uh, uh, S flat car. And at the very bottom of the, this right here, I'm going to put a hole in each side, which is going to fit the, the edges, these little protrusions. And I'll just put a little bit of super glue and put them in both holes and I will have stirrups. And I'm going to do this so effectively each one of these will have eight hole, uh, yeah, eight holes, um, two holes for each stirrup, and there's four stirrups. And I'm going to do uh, eleven of them all at once using <laughs> uh, my Dremel and a number sixty-three bit. All right, I'll see you in a few seconds. Well, that was more than a few seconds. Um, really nice to have this um, uh, Dremel drill base and um, as you can see I went ahead and I put holes at the bottom of each one of these and um, it's hard to see but they're not perfect doesn't matter I'm gonna age all of this <clears throat> and with the super glue and the, the stirrups it you it won't, won't see uh, you won't see the difference so yeah, now the next step is of course to shorten this up and I'm going to cut <coughs> the, the middle section out using um, 
using a, a saw. And that's the next part of the video. Talk to you a bit. Bye. All right. Um, I realized that I needed to just chat about a quick thing. I make uh, two lengths from these uh, uh, S-gauge flat cars. And I'll show you the marks in a second. So eventually it will look like this. Uh, and it's S-gauge, it's got all the right, the wheels and all the, the little steps and the, the brake wheel and so on. I just broke off the, the brake wheel a second ago, which is really unfortunate, but that's, that's the way it goes. So I make this, this length and I make <clears throat> this, this length. And they are um, a little bit longer than the Bachmann. Uh, this bottom one is just a little longer than the Bachmann flat car. This one is every once in a while, I just want to make a, <clears throat> I, I just need something a little longer. So I tend to make um, sort of a ratio of like, you know, 25% uh, these and 75% these, because these are just, uh, they just look uh, neater. Okay, to make the short one, you do have to set up your arm saw sort of in the right way. So here's the here's the flat card that uh, the flat bed that you get. <clears throat> and what you'll notice is these amazing details. This is why I use uh, this uh, S gauge flat card. You see, there's the buckle, and then right next to the buckle, there's these little little uh, little bolts that they've kept on. And I don't want to lose those bolts, and I don't want to lose those details. So the first cut that I do is going to be right here at that first mark right there. And I'm going to keep those little bolts that are right there. The, for the short car, I go and I remove the, the two that are, uh, that are between this. I remove from, from this one here all the way out to the, this one right there. But, when I take this one off, uh, this one off right here, I have to remove the, the the bolt details that are on that this side of it because when I rejoin the two, um, I don't need to have twice <laughs> two, two of these uh, details. When I make the longer version, I keep, I just move over one here and I remove again. I need to make sure that I remove the bolt details on this side because they'll be available on that side right there. All right, let's go to my arm saw um, and I'll just show you the setup and uh, I'll do all 12 of these, uh, 11 of these at once and then I'll show you all the bits and pieces that are left and how I rejoin them all together. Hey everybody, um, yeah, I'm really sorry about this. It's an overcast day, so it's a little bit, uh, the light in here is pretty rough. So I just uh, created a stop that you can see right here that is gonna cut at that line that we we talked about. And I do this iteratively, right? So I I cut well away from those two those two bolts and then I move this just a little bit and then look again until I've cut in the right place um, and then once I've done that I will take all uh, 11 of those and I will process it through and then um, and I do this for the side that it has that little that little bump um, for the brake wheel um, and you can see side flight down make sure that everything is clear and clean and you know I just bring this down and, uh, and just cut it uh, as I go and then I'll do the same thing where I'll iterate with I'll flip this around I'll iterate with uh, this stock until uh, I either cut on that mark or that mark okay so not too complicated and um, next time we'll be back in my work area where uh, I <laughs> will join, rejoin the two minus uh, the thing that's in between. All right, bye-bye. I finished cutting all the pieces uh, on my arm saw and these are the ones that were the standard length with a little knob on the side. These are the other ones um, that uh, also use that stopper. And now I'm gonna join both of these. 
there's a couple missing because, <laughs> and I keep having to relearn this. I don't do it often enough to remember, but if the saw <clears throat> is not at full speed and I go too fast, it breaks it off like this, which is really unfortunate. So I'm going to have to take this guy in um, and join these two together <laughs> to make one more because uh, the other two are gone. All right. I take one of these, one of these, and I put them together this way. So I have these metal blocks that I um, that will go up against these little knobby thingies, <laughs> and I squeeze them together to ensure that the two are parallel. Because if I glue them together and they don't, uh, they're not parallel, then the wheels will sit funny. All right, and you can see with the um, arm saw this is a pretty darn good joint it's not a perfect joint it's not always perfectly parallel because things move a little bit sometimes the the alignment isn't quite right so i use it this way the second thing that i do is i use uh i actually use jb wells because it's a nice thick epoxy and the thickness of that epoxy will fill in any gaps uh, that are in here and then i will scrape uh, any excess that oozes out <coughs> The last thing that I do is I take um, a long, <laughs> a long stick um, of some hard, harder wood. This is not balsa because it's going to have to give me the structural thing, and I cut about a three-quarter inch length stick, and I'm going to put the JB welds in here, and then I'm going to put that uh, inside the JB welds, and um, this will be the, the thing that glues the two together. Now remember, I'm not trying to make the underside look right with all the <coughs> uh, all the, the things that are, would be under a uh, chassis, right? I, I'm not going to go for that kind of detail. All right. Um, JB welds takes about um, 24 hours to dry. It's movable within about two hours or so. I also use a um, piece of marble like this uh, because to ensure that it's flat. <laughs> I don't want two pieces there together and crook it, right? So, um, so and I do three at a time. Um, so I'll just do the rest of these and I'll come back when that's done. Okay, well, here we are. Um, all of this got glued, uh, as you saw in the previous video. It's taken 24 hours. All 12 of them have had the stick, the, these things. There's two things that need to occur at this point. <clears throat> the first one is I'm going to put all, every single one of these and spray paint the bottom black. <laughs> this is my way of trying to diminish how they look, even though you'll never see it. Before the spray painting, <clears throat> as you can see, the there is a, a tiny little um, amount of glue that oozed through here. So I'm going to scrape that off. Um, and But I'm not going to worry about the deck because for the deck, I'm going to cover them with coffee stir sticks. <laughs> that is why uh, that's what the that looks like in the end. Right, and <clears throat> I get, I buy them like this, and I buy the rough ones, not the really nice smooth ones, um, because I want to see the grain and I want the roughness uh, from these. So I've grouped all of these in, in groups of 10, because like 10 is just easy for me. And then I just uh, sort of figure out what the, the length that I want for one of these. And I can use scissors to cut them, or I can use <coughs> uh, just a little jig and a saw, or <laughs> I use a paper cutter. <laughs> I just slice down about 10 at a time, and I can get two, uh, two widths, maybe almost three out of one of these, but I just use two. So um, there's 422 of these I'm going to need <laughs> for all 12 of these. And as you can see, I've already started on a bunch. Um, and they're going to get glued with uh, super glue. And I always get a brand new super glue because the, the super glue is um, very liquidish. Uh, the, the older ones that I have I get, are perfectly fine, but it's just um, the, the, the glue is a little thicker. And I just want it to flow quickly so I could just stack all of these. All right, so I've got some scraping to do, and then I will spray paint him, 
and then I'll get going on putting them on the deck and um, that will be the next time you see me. We're now at the next step. I've laid out three of these and I have a video on how to weather cars and this is very similar to that but I'll just show you the very short version of this. So I have uh, paper to absorb all the moisture, lots and lots of water, <clears throat> and I just pick a gray um, that is going to work. Shake it up, <clears throat> and then I just use the uh, the stuff inside here, and with lots and lots of water, right? So, <clears throat> and all I do is I just wet the side here just lots and lots of moisture and if it's a little too thick in paint I just um, water it down right so really not uh, not particularly hard and I just do the sides I don't do the um, I don't do the, the 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 deck or the bottom the bottom as you know is uh, it's just I got all that spray paint it's not uh, it's not meant to be detailed the top is going to have the the wooden uh, slats so it just doesn't matter very much okay so you see not very much maybe a little thicker here but not by much and we're done and then I'm going to do this to the rest of these three let those dry to the next three and eventually end up with something like this that has just these three sides and then when I put the deck and the stains that uh, sort of gray will will just become really amazing all right now for the deck and this is a little bit of the tedious part and I really do use a magnifying glass for this because it's uh, pretty hard here is where my 422 cut sticks, uh, they're the width of the deck, and we're going to start uh, gluing them on here. I do this in two steps, effectively. Uh, the first step is I just do the first two right here, and then I let them dry. And this is easy, super glue. Uh, a new tube of super glue is great because it really uh, allows the glue to flow much much easier okay so i've put a little bit of glue and then i really take time to line these up these first two and the reason for that is because afterwards when i start putting all of these on uh, i'm going to be pushing on here and i don't want these to start tilting so this is the first step i'm going to put that aside I've done a previous one, <coughs> which is this one. Um, it has the two in the back that I'm going to be pushing up against. Now, I'm going to be just pouring on glue here, and I'm going to put these sticks on really fast. And we'll fast forward through that part of the, <laughs> the vi we'll make it fast uh, through the video. I grab a handful of these because it's easier to grab them out of my hand than out of uh, these little bowls and here we go Okay. <clears throat> that was step number two um, just laid all these out I have these weights <clears throat> that I didn't just put on here just to uh, keep them keep them flat doesn't have to be uh, all that you know because <clears throat> uh, that the glue is drying pretty fast so that's gonna dry <clears throat> and we're putting that up here and I have another one that I've done which is now uh, that's all dried and basically looks like this problem is of course that <laughs> all of that stuff that sticks out on the side isn't quite right plus as you is the unfortunate part about the s gauge um, cars is that although there's pockets and there's some nice details around the pockets they're actually they don't go through uh, you can't actually put a peg in it but I do want to see those details so that means I have to remove all of this little uh, the stuff off the 
of the side. This is kind of tedious, so it's putting the, the deck on. But I do that by putting it on a very flat surface and I press down and I use a very, very sharp X-Acto knife that I just, in between the eyelets, I just uh, press, really score uh, the, 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 the wood over and over again. And then I'll come back up here and I just press down on it. And you can see by just where I scored it, it's, it, it broke exactly at the, at the edge. And the, the nice thing is, if you look, it's actually a pretty rough uh, edge. And that's good because it's going to look like um, a, a, an aged uh, deck when we're done that is uneven. So I'll do that throughout the hole uh, on both sides, both the side and that side. And I will end up with <laughs> something that looks like this. It's nicely, uh, nicely cut. You can see the, the little eyelets. Um, it takes a little while, but uh, it's worth it in the end. Well, that right. took a while. <laughs> um, I glued all, all of the, the stir sticks on here on all 12, all the way here, on all four of these. And now we're ready for the aging part of the deck. Eventually I want it to look exactly like this, or some version of this. And that consists of um, three layers. A layer of this brown, a layer of this black, and then another layer of this brown. And I'm gonna do them when they're still wet. Now. Um, the details of these things are in an aging video that I have, but effectively it's uh, um, uh, alcohol and uh, shoe polish combinations. So it's very inexpensive to make. And I get a really big brush and I'm going to be very sloppy, so lots of newspapers. I do four at a time, move them over, and then for uh, the next four, the next four, and so on. So we'll do one real, uh, we'll do these four real quick. And um, then we'll start after that into the bottom part of, um, of this, adding wheels and so on. So here we go. Lots and lots of um, very sloppy all over the place. Um, fingers, I, you know, I just pick it up. I hold it under here and, you know, just... And it's really great to, 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 to have it dripping on the side here because that's going to give it color as well. And on the front, on the back, <coughs> um, let it dry a little bit, do the next one. This is what's really nice about the alcohol is that it, um, uh, it evaporates pretty quick, right? And this is really about being very messy. So the more messy you are, the better this is going to look. Um, you know, and again, lots and lots and lots slopping everywhere. And lastly, this last layer of brown on the side. And you can see I'm dripping on these other ones and the dripping is going to cause a different shading. So that's good stuff, right? So now I start on the black again. Um, and each one of these layers is a little less because, and you can see, look at that. That's going to be beautiful right there, right? And and it's being, it's that um, that gray paint that we used is um, is absorbing some of this stain, right? And you know, you can already see the the shading is is changing uh, on all four of these. It's just is wonderful stuff to. It's just really great uh, for aging. Okay, let me do the last one here. And, you know, again, sloppy, very, very sloppy. And the next thing I'll do is I'll do another one of this brown and keep on going. All right, we'll the next it. step is coupling the truck set to my flat car so that it looks something like this. Uh, from uh, f so that I can run my trains. Um, I use the 29901 Bachman truck set. Uh, it's a very nice truck set. Um, unfortunately, 
uh, the hole here is in metric, while the hole in here from uh, Flyer is in inches. And you've, I've got a couple of posts that comes out of this that can uh, put this in that I can then screw, put a screw into. Now the closest thing I could find, of course, in the US is a tube that is 530 seconds and that fits just very nicely in here. Unfortunately, the 530 seconds is incredibly loose inside of this hole. So that's not gonna work. Um, the thing I can do, however, is do a step down, right? So I get a tube uh, that is uh, 5 16 and as a hole that is 530 seconds. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take um, effectively this, um, do it like this where I have a small step down like this and then I'll put um, the, the the wheel set on top of that post and then put a screw to hold all that together. All right, that's how we're gonna do it. Uh, <laughs> it takes a little bit, but that's okay. So the first thing to do is cut about half inch. Um, I cut 24 of these, half inch. That's what's inside of this little bucket. There's a, a bunch of these in there so that they're ready to go. The other thing I'm going to need is a very sharp razor saw. I'm going to need nippers. Uh, I'm going to use uh, this pen, which is uh, to rust things up because it's easier to age things before they go on than after. And then just a set of... Um, tweezers that have a curved end it makes it easier to put the screw in and then of course a very 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 sharp uh, exacto knife so the first thing is i take my regular s gauge flat car and i go to the drill press uh, where i have i drill a 5 8 inch hole in here to accommodate this bigger post the problem, of course, is that I should have done this before I put the deck on. Uh, so here I had to set a depth gauge in order to make the hole uh, the right length. As a friend always tells me, it's easy, you always know what you should have done after you've done it. <laughs> so once I'm done with that, what you end up with is something that looks like this that has these wider holes uh, in it, which is makes you ready. So here we go. Here's the, the wider hole. I'm going to take my post, a little bit of super glue. And I always, always put the super glue on the inside because um, uh, otherwise, that way it, it gets pushed down rather than uh, being brought up. So finish that. And then I put my post in and I really rotate it so the glue gets uh, get nicely uh, taken care of. Then I take my very sharp razor saw and just cut all the way across. And when I'm done with that, I end up with this side that looks like this with the, um, with the, 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 it's nice and even. I make sure it's nice and even with my very sharp uh, exacto knife because this is what the the head of that um, truck set is going to sit on. So it has to. If it's uneven, it's going to wobble, right? Then I take one of my um, half inch three thirty second um, stub that I had cut, and I. Put some glue on the inside again. And I always put a bunch, right? Don't don't be stingy on the glue. <laughs> this is uh, in one part of the, the build and then that you want that's very strong. So I then rotate this in here so there's nice and strong uh, connection. So what I'm left with now is um, is this uh, with this with the little nub and you know it's just fine uh, this is exactly what I want unfortunately when I put the truck 
on top, what you'll see, and it's hard to see, is that that little white nub <laughs> sticks up a little too much. Um, and if I were to just put the screw in there, this, this thing would be up and down and it would flex, right? And it wouldn't give a lot of stability to this. You want that little white nub to be flush with the, the top of this car. So I made myself a little jig that is the width of the truck of that's, that's in here from the top of this to the bottom on the inside of that. And I, I make jigs because measurements uh, are not always exactly the same. And then I just put my jig on top on the tube. And what you can see is that, you know, there's, it's sticking up. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before, which is to take my razor saw. And I'm just going to cut this all the way across. And it's not very hard, right? It goes pretty fast. Um, Unfortunately, there's always a little bit of flashing left here. So I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and really clean up that flashing. But when I take this out, this is the exact right height for my, um, my wheel set. So I take my, my wheel, I uh, put it on my stub, it's now ready to go, right? And these wheels come with a little screw uh, that I will put on these tweezers. And unfortunately, that little screw is a little longer than from the top here all the way to the bottom. So if I were to just put it in, it would uh, and glue it, it would um, uh, it it would just stick up and it would wobble right so I just took nippers and I sliced this off and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing I did before where I'm gonna take a little bit of super glue and I'm gonna put it all the way around not too much because you don't want any of that glue to um, to stick to the to the truck uh, otherwise it will um, no longer turn so I'm doing this very carefully and this is why I wanted um, those curved um, the curved part so that I can go right in there alright so I push that in I will let the glue dry and I'm left with this one in this case it was a black black head and you know it just rotates it's just fine and when I'm done with both and there's been time for the glue to dry I now have have it done and flipping up and down and it's all nice and stable um, you know it it has the same wobble that a uh, flat car that you would get from Bachman uh, would be and you know it's it really works so the next step after this is going to be putting in the uh, the couplers and I you might think gee why didn't you do that in the first place um, as <laughs> it'll be harder to add the couplers in uh, after you've added and glued everything in the problem is that this this height I can't get this height uh, exactly constant right between the bottom of the wheels to to up here where the coupler is going to go and um, I want to do that, uh, so I want to do it afterwards so I can make sure the coupler is at the right height. All right, I'm going to take the rest of my 10 cars and get them to all to here, and we'll get the couplers after that. Okay, we're getting there <laughs> slowly, but all right. The first <clears throat> thing I'd like to go through is figuring out the height of the couplers. So I took an ON30 flat car from Bachman with a coupler and I took one of my cars that was finished and I set them on a flat surface, put them next to each other and made some measurements. And what I realized is that on this, I was going to need in the center part here, a 3 8 inch little block to set the coupler box on top of. So I took 
a <coughs> long stick. This used to be very long. <laughs> it's 3 8 inch thick and it's a quarter inch wide. The reason it's a quarter inch wide, you'll see in a second, this is one of the coupler boxes from um, that, that I've gotten and it's about a quarter inch wide. So you need one, I needed one of these. So I took along one of these and I cut a whole bunch that are almost a half inch long. I, 24 of them. And I created this little, um, drug, I mean, this little container full of those. <clears throat> Most of this is preparing for making all of this. And as usual, in any construction, <laughs> you do uh, more time in preparation than building. The other thing is I have a very thin piece of wood and I made a bunch of their lengths with that and I just cut them with scissors and you'll see in a minute how we use them. And we're going to go in order of what you're going to need. So we've done the two pieces of wood. I have the coupler boxes that I get from KD. Um, and but I don't get their couplers because I don't like them very much. I don't like the spring. I get the Easy Mate couplers from Bachman, and you know this uh, this spring action they have on the side just works just fine in general. And I take my uh, rusting pen, shake it up, and then I rust up the uh, the coupler head, uh, top and bottom. And then I assemble it all together and I just glue it, right? I, uh, and I have this spring-loaded uh, thing that just keeps it all together. Um, and you can see it's all nicely rusted. I'm not gonna use screws for any of this. I'm just gonna glue it onto the block uh, that we'll talk in a minute. The next thing is, of course, we've already talked about is the Titchy stirrups with the little, um, pegs on the side that we'll put glue in and put into the holes. And down here you can't see being glued is a brake wheel with a, uh, oh no, you can't see it, with a, a little um, the little shaft that I uh, put together. <clears throat> and when that's used, we will go from there. The other thing you'll need, black paint. You'll need gray paint, paintbrush. Of course, um, tweezers. Um, magnifying glass, of course, as I keep talking, and sharp, sharp, sharp exacto knife. And lastly, I really like this Gorilla Glue. And I'm gonna glue everything. I don't screw it all together. Um, it's, it's, it's easy enough. All right, this is the prep work. I've prepared lots and lots of couplers um, and I've got all my bits and pieces. <clears throat> the first step in all of this is I take one of my cars, I take one of my little blocks, and I put some glue right there, and then I'm gonna put this block like that. And I'm gonna use the central rail and the screw to make sure that this is lined up in the center. Once I'm done with that, I end up with um, this little, oopsie, uh, it fell in. <laughs> I end up with the, the other side, which is all lined up and very nice. And then here is that really thin little piece that I'm gonna put right in here because you see there is a dip and I didn't know whether the coupler was gonna to need to sit as low as that dip so I didn't fill it in before. But now I know and I just wanna put this little, little stick right there, I'm gonna let it dry and once I'm, done drying, I end up with something that looks like this, which is, of course, has a lot of, it's too high. And I'm gonna use that very, very sharp X-Acto knife to make it even. And I end up with something that looks like this. And I don't try to make it perfectly even, I could sand it and anything else, but the unevenness, once it's all weathered, kinda just adds charm to it. So I'm gonna just leave it like that. And there's the, the, uh, the, where the coupler box is going to go on top of. The next part is, of course, to, uh, to I'm going to paint this bottom one black to match the bottom. And I'm going to paint this front one, that gray that I got. And I use lots and lots of water. <coughs> and I end up with, <coughs> here's the 
here's the black, sorry, that you can see. And then here's the gray that I put up front. And I put lots of water and I put a couple coats and I did it all the way across to sort of uh, feather it all in together. So that really worked out very nicely. And then I take my uh, coupler box that's all assembled. And there's a little, little uh, tongue at the very front. And that little tongue is meant to sit up against uh, the front like this, so it catches just like that, right? Make sure <laughs> that you have the uh, wire pointing uh, in the downside to, uh, towards the wheels, right? Otherwise it's the wrong direction. So once you're done with super gluing that, <clears throat> you end up with this side with the, uh, the coupler box in place. So very nice. Right, it really works out. It's all lined up between uh, these uh, these ribs that screw, and uh, so I, I made sure that uh, it's going to be straight. All right, when both of them are <coughs> glued, here it is. Here's the final thing. It's uh, very nice, good deck, nicely weathered. The next part, of course, is putting in the stirrups. Right, and remember we had made all those holes. So I'm gonna cut out one of the stirrups off of the sprue. And I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on these little nibs that are sticking up. And then all I need to do, and I'm using magnifying glasses, I put, them, put the little sprues inside the holes, just like that, and glue it in. And um, when I'm done with all four, I end up with almost the final car. You can see the, the, the stirrups are in, the wheels are in, the coupler boxes are in, all four of the stirrups are uh, taken care of. So quite nice. And now we're at the very, very last step, which is putting in the brake wheel. And for these um, flyer, there's this really little nice <laughs> uh, protruding thingy that has a little hole in it. And I'm gonna take that brake wheel and when it would have been dry and put it in here. And I end up with that final product that we've kept uh, showing and talking about. There's the brake wheel, stirrups, wheels, couplers. Everything is done. Nice deck, nice weathering. So uh, lots of little steps, um, you know, just take it slow, um, do a little bit at a time. It's tedious and it's repetitive. The reason it's I do it um, so many at once is because I don't enjoy doing this all that much, but I really want to have a library of these that are sitting so that if I get an idea, if I see a picture of any load, I can just grab one of these and put something on top right away, right? And it allows me to um, not delay and not go, oh God, I gotta build a flat car or something like that. So yeah, quite nice. Um, now the next thing is I'm gonna show you a bunch of these flat cars, um, these particular ones with uh, different loads. Hey, thanks for sticking it out all this far. And it was a long road, but now you can see my flat car inventory has been refilled. Some slots are missing there. That's usually where I have the Bachman flat cars that I just can buy on eBay once in a while when they're really inexpensive. Um, overall, the cost of each one of those is about uh, 30 ish dollars um, from Button to Boom. Uh, it took about, I don't know, four, four days or so. Um, it's not continuous, of course, because you're letting things dry and uh, and when you paint and glue and all that other stuff. Um, so yeah, kind of worth it. I really like the way they look. And now when I have an idea, um, I don't need to wait. I don't need to go on. Or if I see a picture, I, I know I have this inventory. I can just grab one and put something on it and keep the, the cars and the rest of the drawers here uh, going and being filled with uh, fun ideas. All right, enjoy. Good luck. Bye-bye.